All right, so that out of the way, welcome everyone back to another episode of Herbal Prepper Live. Our show airs live every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific. Today is Sunday, August 6th. Yes, August 6th already, 2017. Welcome to everyone tuning in live this evening, everyone who's in the chat room. A big hello to everyone there. And all those folks are going to be listening to the download later on. This week, we are taking another look at budget prepping, and we are changing our focus from bugging in to looking at bug out bags, um, also calling it a 72-hour bag, or they are also known as go bags or get out of Dodge or good bags and so on. And this is one of those really basic things that every prepper's got, um, you know, it's, it's one of like the very first things that, you know, oh, you, you got into prepping. Now you got to put this bug out bag together. But one of the things that you don't want to, you know, you don't want to get all caught up in all of the lists and all of the information out there. Because I know that's what I did. I, I got overwhelmed when I was new to this. And I would look up all these different websites and all these different books and all their different lists of what you need to have. That's what someone else thinks you need to have in a bug out bag or an emergency bag. And there's all kinds of really cool gadgets and cool gear and, and you know, all kinds of fancy schmancy everything. And all that stuff's great. And I'm not saying not to get it. Um, some of the stuff is just really better quality and, and it's lighter and you can carry more of it because it's lighter, but it can all be really pricey. So the one thing that you don't want is for there to be an emergency and that you need to have a bag packed and ready to go, but you don't have yours together yet because you're saving up for, you know, just the right knife, just the right flashlight, just the right this or that, whatever. The thing is, you can always upgrade your bag later, but you need to have something ready to go now. Um, you don't know when an emergency is going to hit. If a fire happens in your house, and I hope that it doesn't, but let's say a fire happens in your house in the middle of the night, you're not going to run around and grab stuff. You just need to get out of the house. Um, at least you shouldn't be going around grabbing stuff. You know, get out of the house, get the kids up, get out, you know, but you get the people out. You get the pets out. You, you don't go grabbing for stuff to put in a bag at that point in time. Um, and granted, the, you know, a bug out bag really isn't intended for, you know, if you have a fire, but it can certainly, you know, whether it's that or some other emergency where you have to get out of your house, it can certainly make those few days right after some something like that go a lot more smoothly because you have some of your own stuff. But anyway, um the thing is you can always upgrade later on put something together that's functional and you know every six months or so you should be doing a review of what's in your bags anyway just to change things out for the seasons you know if if you're going from the warmer half of the year to the colder half of the year you need to be changing out some of the clothes you need to be um double checking that whatever food is in there is still good, that everything in there is still good, make sure nothing broke, make sure everything is still functional. So you need to be checking that out, every, I say every six months anyway. So I think that's a good time. If you wanna upgrade something, do it then. But for now, let's put something together so that you're not caught unprepared. Now, before we get going here, I also need to apologize for there not being a live show last week. Um, the week leading up to that was kind of like a Murphy's Law week. Everything that could have gone wrong did. I even managed to break my website, had the big white screen of death and everything on it. I was trying to update stuff. And um, anyway, it all had a very positive end because when the site got fixed this time, it actually solved like a bunch of other technical problems that I had. And so this week I have been flying by getting work done and it's just been amazing. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. So I've been hyper-focused on all of that to get caught up with stuff. And I've been getting caught up on all kinds of overdue tasks because things just aren't taking me out. Like what, what used to take me days to do is taking me hours now. So um, I guess it was all for the best in the end, but um, I just had a, had a week there of... Um, just everything hitting all at once. So anyway, I just I just wanted to, you know, apologize for that. But for those who are listening live, if you have something that you want to share during tonight's 
uh, live broadcast or if you've got some kind of an agging question, please do join us here in the chat room here on PrepperBroadcasting.com and type your question in there. Or better yet, take advantage of this being a live broadcast and call into the show. The phone number to do so is 347-202-0228. Again, that number is 347-202-0228. And press 1 when when you call so that we know that you are waiting for us to pick up the phone. All right, I have a number of announcements. Um, I'm going to try and get them through these quickly so that we can get to um, our topic today. So if you're over at Blog Talk, come on over here to Prepper Broadcasting, join the chat room here. That's where I'm paying attention. If you type a question in the chat room here, that's where I'm going to see it. Um, while you're here, make sure that you check out the rest of the site, look up all the other shows. There was a new show that aired on Friday night. I don't know if you caught it. Pretty good. You got to check out all the other shows here, tons of archived episodes. Um, you know, take advantage of this. For those of you who may be new, who do not, you may be, this is your first time listening to the show. I have two books available that you need to have in your Prepper library. Prepper's Natural Medicine is a crash course in herbalism. It covers core herbal skills, therapeutic properties of over 50 herbs, plus herbal formulas to get you prepared for both acute and chronic conditions when there is no pharmacy. It covers a lot of stuff. It doesn't cover everything found in, let's say, an herbal certification course, but it's like the next best thing. My second book, Prepping for a Pandemic, is loaded with critical information that you need to have. Prepping for a Pandemic delves into the hard lessons that we can learn from the Ebola outbreak in 2014, how we can apply this knowledge to protect ourselves from future deadly epidemics and pandemics. I give you my top seven picks for the next great pandemic, herbal and conventional options where such options exist. They don't always exist, but I do my best, you know, for where they do. Um, how to do a self-imposed reverse quarantine and there's just so much more information packed in this book there just isn't another book like it on the market so if you're serious about being ready and being prepared you really need to get both of my books so they can be found preppers natural medicine and prepping for a pandemic can be found in the prepper broadcasting bookshop on amazon.com barnesandnoble.com and everywhere books are sold if you are lucky enough to still have a local bookstore they could use your support go down there if they don't have either of my books you can ask them to order them and they'll get them for you. The last item that I need to mention uh, before we get going here, uh, please go over to herbalprepper.com. Um, tomorrow, there is a, a new session of the Herbal Skills Intensive starting. This is an eight-week herbal boot camp for, for herbal skills. It covers the therapeutic properties of 30 different herbs. It's got eight pre-recorded lectures. There's a once-weekly live Q&A with me. Get your questions answered. Um, this is for everyone who's already registered. The course access will be granted by tomorrow at 2 p.m. I'm going to be starting late tonight, adding people, you know, to the course. So, but by 2 p.m. tomorrow, it should be all set. However, if you still want to get into the course, I'll open up registration for one more week. The first week's assignments rely mostly on items from your local grocery store. Um, mostly and it shouldn't be difficult to get caught up but if you're still interested in it get in you can do the coursework you can attend the the, the weekly Q&A you can watch the videos and such and um, you, then you can get your herbs ordered for the rest of the assignments uh, but it won't take you much time to get caught up but the absolute final day to register for this course is going to be on August 13th at 11.55 p.m., so five minutes before midnight, right before it turns into Monday morning. So until a week from today, just before midnight, last chance, and then it's going to close for um, probably a month before you could get into it again. Um, the other thing is that there's also the Essentials of Verbal Practice that's starting on Monday, August 14th. This week there's going to be some information to those um, who've already registered for, for this going out. Um you can still get in on this course as well. It covers a range of topics that prepare you to actually work with the public and specifically, you know, the public in a situation where uh, people are 
maybe in an austere environment where things are a bit harsh, where there's a lot of chaos and so on and so forth. It covers everything from the history of herbalism to ethics and herbal practice, provides client intake and assessment forms, how to document where your supplies come from, where they went to. There's also a clinical component where you're going to get to work with an herbal client. It'll be under my supervision. You'll get all the support that you need from that. That is still available um, Monday, August 14th. It starts though. Um, and there's also the herbal burn care course. It's still available in its original form until, uh, I'm not going to give you a date on that just yet, but it's at a reduced tuition rate until the updated version goes live. And anyone who's taken the course before will also get access to the new course once that's available on the site. That's it for announcements. I managed to get through all that fairly quickly. So let's go ahead. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, and we will uh, start talking about how to build a 72-hour bag without breaking the bank. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and we're talking about budget prepping and putting together a bug-out bag, a 72-hour bag, whatever you want to call it, together without you know, breaking the bank without spending tons of money. Now, one of the first things a new prepper does, and I mentioned this earlier, is make a bug out bag. Um, I spent a lot of time online. I was just overwhelmed by all the lists when I was brand new to all this. It was just sort of, I just, I was learning a lot of like your, you know, the prepper lingo and, and trying to understand what people were talking about. There's so many new terms to learn, so many new concepts to learn. It can be overwhelming, you know, but so I started, you know, I did my research and, and then I started looking at the prices of some of these things on these lists. And, you know, then I was thinking, oh gosh, I got to have one of these for every member of the house and I got to have extra stuff in each vehicle. You know, I mean, that's, that's a lot of cash. Um, especially when, you know, we had really kind of gotten into this right after my husband had gotten laid off. There wasn't a whole lot of cash to go around. Um, you know, so it got to be mindful of that. And so for a while I didn't make one, you know, I mean, it just seemed like it was too big of a task too too much money. And, you know, I, I didn't want to spend money on junk and, and I didn't know if I really needed some stuff. So I sat on it for a bit and that's probably not the smartest thing to do, but you know, it was just, I was frozen from information overload. So after I kind of, you know, took a deep breath and I started culling out what were the needs and what were the wants? You know, is is this really a need Is or is it just something that I want? Will something else suffice? Could I get by with, you know, something uh, that maybe doesn't cost quite as much? What, what do I have here at home that would that I don't have to buy at all and that would serve the same purpose? What can I do? So from there, I made use of every free and low cost resource that I could. Um, and ultimately, I was able to put together a bag that would last me three days at 72 hours. And I only spent about 30, maybe 35 ish or so dollars, um, you know, at, um, various discount stores that are local to me and also using free stuff, free stuff being stuff that I either owned already or stuff that I knew other people had that they weren't using. And I just asked them, Hey, can I have it? And you know, they were more than happy to be rid of a few things. I got a couple of different backpacks for the kids that way. Um, just people were, you know, they'd used it and they didn't have a use for it anymore. And, uh, you know, me taking it off their hands meant that they didn't have to go drive someplace to donate it or find, you know, someone to give it to. I, you know, that was it. So, um, let me see, looking at my notes here. Uh, well, your costs are going to be a little different depending on what you already have on hand and what stores are near you. And this was a few years ago, but it really shouldn't be that different. It should be in the same ballpark. So the very first thing that I did was I looked for a backpack. For myself, I already had a really good one. I've been carrying around this, um, this Swiss Army backpack, I don't know, maybe like 15, 20 some odd years in that ballpark. And 
the thing is still just as good as the day that I got it. I mean, nothing, I mean, the straps are all, I mean, everything is still sturdy. There's nothing ripped. Everything is still functional. Um, I've abused this thing. I've, I've, I've had, you know, every, all kinds of electronics and heavy textbooks in it. And, and it's, it's been everywhere with me and it's still going strong. So I had that to start off with. Um, and like I said, for, you know, some other family members, I, um, I just asked because I knew other, I knew other people who, you know, they had kids who had outgrown their backpacks, you know, they, they didn't want that anymore. They wanted something else or they just wanted a new one. And, and so I, you know, I got them. You can all, you, the thing is, is that you gotta be really careful because a bad backpack something that's going to come undone if it's already starting to I mean you can fix them but you know um if it's if it's well made and it fits you well then that that does go a long way but it's better to have something rather than nothing the next thing I did didn't cost me a dime um and I made a document binder now I will admit I had packages of three ring binders already because between work and organizing stuff at home and for school and whatnot, I use a lot of these things. So I would have, um, I'd go to, um, oh, either the wholesale club or I'd go to the office supply store and I'd get a bunch of them. You don't need to do that because that's a, that can get a little pricey and you're buying them in bulk like that. You can get them at, you know, the dollar store for very, very cheap. Um, but I had them on hand. But the other thing that I really found very useful were the plastic sheet protectors for three ring binders because they're going to help um, prevent things like um, spills and they're going to help prevent things like um, your pages tearing out. Um, you know, you certainly don't, I mean, some of these documents, you don't want to be punching three ring holes in them. You don't want to be doing that. You just slide them in there and then they're fine. So I put my binder together and I put all my important documents in there, original birth certificates, marriage certificates, property deeds, um, latest banking statements, important photos. You should have a picture of everyone in your group. Okay. Children, adults, you should have a picture of them. List important names and phone numbers. Um, you know, if I know that people today, we, we don't remember phone numbers so much. We're not dialing them. We have our smartphones. Um, they may not necessarily be available. Um, whether or not phone service is available is another thing. But you should have everyone's contact information, addresses and such for important people. Um, I made copies of all of this and I put them in plastic sheet protectors and, um, and I put those in the bag. If you had to buy everything new, but you went to like the discount stores, the dollar stores and all of that, you could probably do it for about 10 bucks. Um, maybe probably less than that. Um, it's really the sheet protectors that, that I haven't, I haven't found sheet protectors anywhere other than like Walmart for pretty cheap. Um, let's see. Also in the binder, don't forget, you know, we're talking about bugging out. We're not just like evacuating the house without any place to go. You have a place to go. You've identified a place to go already. You're just, all your bag is trying to do is get you from point A to point B. It's not something you're living out of forever. Um, we hope not. That that would be, you wouldn't be able to do that um, with this kind of a, a, a setup here. But from point A to point B, that's your goal. Um, so go on to Google find your primary, secondary, and tertiary routes from point A to point B, print them, it's free. You can drag your little, um, you drag your route to cross through parks if you're on foot, the, the Google, uh, excuse me, Google has that option where you can um, travel by foot, not just by car. Utilize all of that and put them in your binder. Um, let me see, is there anything else to put in the binder that I may, oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, that's probably it. The next thing, um, a folding backpack stove. Um, I had already picked up several since my husband and I enjoy camping. We already had a bunch of these, so this wasn't any kind of an extra cost to me. However, today I was searching around on Amazon. If I had to get one today, you know, what would I get? I mean, because I've got some really fancy ones and some really very simple ones and all kinds of camping cookware and whatnot. 
Um, but I found one that was on Amazon on sale that's got everything that you'd need. Um, take several types of fuel, whether it's like twigs or using a fuel canister. It was about 12 bucks. I'm going to have to go look that up and grab the, the link and I'll post it to my site with with a bunch of these things. But um, it was $12. So, you know, it's that's that's probably not going to be the make or break, you know, amount in somebody's budget. You know, um, it, it's not like saying adding an extra $200 expense to somebody's monthly budget. It's just 12 bucks that one month. You can probably find that easily enough in your budget somewhere. Um, the next thing, clothing. So when I was, when I was doing this, I just grabbed two pairs of socks that I already had from my drawer and I double bagged them in Ziploc bags. And I did the same thing with two pairs of underwear, uh, t two t-shirts. I got two t-shirts. And then what I did was I had a pair of sweatpants or a pair of shorts, depending on the season. And I swapped them out and that was it. I didn't buy any additional clothing. Um, I figured I was going to have whatever I had on at the moment. And I've got clean, if I've got clean socks and clean underwear and I can put a clean shirt on, you know, and, you know, then I'm, I'm doing pretty well. So, um, for what I was, you know, for the kinds of scenarios I was thinking, it's certainly better than nothing. If you've got wet socks, that's just miserable. You don't want wet socks, but I mean, if you want to buy new socks, you want to buy, you know, something special for this. I don't, I don't know why, but maybe you do. That's fine you can certainly just grab this out of your drawer. You're probably not going to miss the two pairs of socks. If you don't have enough socks or if you don't have enough pairs of underwear in your drawer, that taking two pairs out, maybe you need to buy some more of them anyway. So that's, you know, you buy them in a big bulk bag, slip two pairs out, put them in your bug out bag. You're not going to notice that. Um, let me see, a bandana. I think pretty much everyone... Everyone's got a bandana kicking around somewhere, right? Um, I don't know. That seems like one of those things everywhere I've gone, someone has a bandana tucked somewhere. If you don't, they're not that expensive. But there's a lot of uses there. Everything from using it as a sling to... Um, you're not supposed to use it as a tourniquet, but you can use it as a tourniquet. Um, lots of uses with a bandana. Water filtration, lots of uses. Another thing that I did, um, yep, exactly. So I was saying water filtration with charcoal and you wanted to get some clean, clean rocks, some gravel to in there too, or sand rather, I should say. Um, and you can certainly, um, make your own water filter out of that. Another thing that I did, um, was I grabbed three days worth of vitamins and some, some additional cough drops just in case you never know. And I put them in a little metal tin. Now I've got tons of metal tins kicking around that I use for salves. So that's what I used. But, you know, you can always, like, you know, grab an Altoids tin if you have those laying around. A lot of preppers have Altoid tins laying around. Um, or, barring that, you can get another Ziploc sandwich bag or a snack bag will do. Now, I put vitamins in there, but if you've got, um, if you've got um, medications that you need, you know, see if you can't put three days worth of medications in there until you know just to tide you over from point a to point b that's all we're looking for in there just so that you have it so if there's anything that's like critical that you need make sure that it's there um food so it's got to be shelf stable because you're only looking in this bag once every six months so it's got to be able to last without refrigeration for six months so in my house, I always have a lot of nuts and a lot of seeds. The kids eat dried fruit, though I don't have that, but they do. And, um, so it's very easy with that to make up some kind of a granola-like mix or trail mix or something like that. Um, if you tolerate grains and carbs, if you do, because some people do, um, it's really not that difficult to make your own granola bars if you can tolerate grains, if you can tolerate oats anyway. Um, I can't, that's not an option for me, but if you can, and it is for my kids, so they have it, so um, you can do that. Um, there's also a few other things that you can add to it. You can grab um, the foil packaged tuna or salmon. 
was I used to grab a bunch of those, the foil packages of, of that, and also of um, chicken. And you can stuff those in um, the bag as well. Beef jerky. Um, and as much as I'd love to say, um, you, the, you, you know, make your own and put it in there, um, you really kind of want the stuff that you get at the store, the commercially packaged stuff. It's... Um, it's not going to go bad if you put that in your bug out bag. Everyone else that I know um, stores their homemade beef jerky, I, you know, either in the fridge or if they keep it on the counter. You know, I ask them, well, how long does it last on the counter? And the only answer I get is, I don't know. It never lasts long enough in our house to find out. So I don't have any clear answer on, on how, on uh, what exactly the shelf life is of beef jerky sitting out on a counter. So because I don't know that, I can't recommend to put your homemade stuff in there if you feel comfortable doing that by all means but I don't know that that's shelf stable I know that the commercially packaged stuff is and the commercially packaged stuff is not that expensive so uh, of course there's always pemmican that's always an option um, got to wrap that up properly put it in the bag um, there's also another thing that you can try um, have, if you've seen any of those um, meals in a jar the, you know, all dehydrated stuff. Um, you can get freeze dried meats and, you know, various vegetables. And, um, usually there's some cheese powder or some milk powder or whatever or so. Um, if get, you know, if you, if you have a lot of that stuff on hand, instead of putting your meal in a jar, you can put them in mylar bags with O2 absorbers and all you're going to have to do is add water and cook it. Of course, that assumes that you have water. Um, this would be in place of getting MREs because we're trying to keep the costs down. If you, But this is only going to keep the costs down if you already have a lot of those um, number 10 cans of dehydrated food on hand, but a lot of preppers do. So if if you have been, let's say like I was when I was putting this bag together, um, I had been stocking up on food for a little while because that was something I felt comfortable doing. I could stock up on food. I, I wasn't sure about all the different gear and all the different stuff that I might want to put in a bag, but I felt pretty good that I could, you know, figure out what kinds of food that I wanted in the house. So I stocked up on that kind of stuff. So for me, um, that was stuff I already had on hand. Otherwise, um, raid your pantry and see what shelf stable that you could take with you. Um, other than that, other ideas, you could go get protein bars from the store. Um, the, you know, again, that's an added cost, but they're not that expensive. So, um, you know, if that was, I mean, you could put, you could put several of them in there to make sure that you get enough calories to get through, oh, I don't know, you know, trekking from wherever, you know, wherever you are to wherever you're going. I don't know how far you're trekking. Um, yeah, dollar store protein bars, they have them. They really do. So don't don't discount the dollar store. Go there and look for any of their shelf stable stuff. I mean, if you're really in a pinch, you know, then, you know, it's not something I'd eat. But, you know, if it's if it's a choice of having nothing or something, then go get the um, those little snack packs that have the crackers with the peanut butter in them. You know, it's not the best stuff, but it'll keep you going. If that's all that you can do, then do that. You know, this doesn't have to be perfect. The, the food in your bug out bag isn't a lifestyle. It's three days of getting from point A to point B. Your food storage, be more picky with that. But this is just survive until you get to wherever your safe place is. Oh, I should, uh, your safe location, your bug out location. I don't want to confuse that with uh, safe spaces. Where that's a whole different, that's a whole different can of worms. All right, so let's see. Other things you can add there. So water, um, if you do the, sort of meals in a mylar bag instead of meals in a jar those dehydrated things you do need to have water so i grabbed um just a couple of bottles of uh you know bottled water and i put it in the bag um is that gonna leak well i suppose it could um they weren't opened but i suppose it could um are they gonna overheat and is bpa gonna leach into my water you probably um, again, 72 hours. I don't care. I just want there to be water. But the other thing is that I had a water filter, um, as a water filter drink bottle as well. Um, and that was free because it was already in a bucket of, 
emergency food from August and Farms that I had. So I got the bucket and I opened it up because I wanted to see what was in it. And I wanted to see whether it actually lasted for the, you know, you know, the time that they claimed that it would last. And would I be hungry? Would I not be hungry? That kind of thing. So and there was this bottle of, you know, this um, this uh, water filter um, that was also a water bottle. So you fill up the water bottle, and then you drink through the straw and it filters it. So I threw that in there because it was free. Now, since then, I've upgraded, um, but that was what I had because it was what I had on hand. If you don't have that, you know, there are, go on, you know, if you go either to the camping section of Walmart or you go on Amazon, there's tons of these now. I mean, I've put um, a number of different ones in there, like uh, Life Straw, and then I've got the Sawyer Mini now. So again, when when you go to check on your bag every six months, just replace one thing but in the meantime just put whatever you got in there uh, and you know and don't worry about it being perfect it doesn't have to be perfect it's like you know when you have your first kid everything's going to be perfect and you have your baby shower and you ask for all these perfect perfect things for this in this idyllic world that you think you're going to use all this stuff and then by like baby number two or three you're like yeah whatever hand-me-downs are fine whatever oh it's got a stain on it don't care whatever and and your kids are perfectly fine anyway it's kind of the same thing you're just throwing this bag together you will upgrade it as time goes on don't worry about it, but something is better than nothing. Um, let's see. An LED flashlight. This was free because it was free only because I got it at Harbor Freight when I was already buying something else. Um, I was buying wool blankets, which were a prep for the house. Um, they had a sale on wool blankets. I think they were like five bucks each. They're like the old army blankets. And I loved those things. I know they're itchy and I know that they're miserable, but you can use those things for so many, so many uses. You can put them, if you need traction on a wheel of your vehicle, if either if it's muddy or if there's too much snow, um, if you're stuck someplace and it's very cold, those things are very, very warm. They're thin. They don't take up a lot of space. So they were having a sale on that. But if you look at the Harbor, Harbor Freight is in so many places, look at their circular They They give away one free item every single week, as long as you go in and buy something. Now, if you're not, if there's nothing there that you want, then don't just go buy something just to get the free LED flashlight. But if you, or whatever the free thing is that they're giving away that week, but if you are going to buy something anyway, get the free item. So, oh, your heart, oh, hardly free is always out of the free stuff. I, we, we've got a few of them around here. Ours has been pretty good. And, um, so I've, I've been lucky with that, I guess. Um, we, we've gotten a bunch of free stuff from them. Um, but just as you do have to go like the very first day that the circular comes out because they, the, the free stuff does go because people are looking for it. Um, but again, if you already have to be buying something. Otherwise, don't buy something just to get the freebie. Uh, then you're not saving anything. Um, the next thing, um, dollar store or um, whether it's Walmart or Target or whatever, they all have travel-sized bottles of shampoo, soap, toothpaste, these travel-sized things. Also get a cheap toothbrush. Um, just, I, like, I got them at the Family Dollar and I got a zipper pouch toiletry kit. Um, at another store called Savers. And I think all told it was like eight bucks. Savers is one of these places you go, you bring bags of your old stuff there. They um, give you credit for however many bags you bring. And then you get like a discount off of their stuff. And of course they get the, you, they get your old stuff. They get everybody's old stuff. They clean it all up and then they put it out there and they resell it for very, very little money. Um, perfect for kids that are growing so fast that, you know, you just, you can't keep up with, you know, um, you buy a nice outfit once they wear it one time and they're too big. So anyway, I went there and I found this little toiletry kit. It was like $3 and everything else I got over a family dollar in the dollar store, um, that went into it. But the idea here is that you get the little toiletry kit and then you put all of this stuff in there, um, because you want to prevent any potential spills. You don't want this stuff spilling all over everything, you know, in your, in your, uh, 24 hour bag. Um, so keep all that stuff together. Um, you can always get a nicer travel case later on down the road. And I'd also suggest if you can get, um, one of those travel cases just for the bar of soap, because once you get the soap wet, um, you don't want to put that right in your bag. So, um, cleanliness will keep you from getting sick. So, 
having the soap is a good idea. So unless you want your soap to be a one use kind of thing, get that. Either that or get an additional um get an additional shampoo and use that as liquid soap um to wash your hands with and then you can always put the cap back on. Either way, don't care how you do it, but um find the little travel size things and they're all they're always really cheap. Something that is not necessarily inexpensive, but most people have kicking around is duct tape. You can use this for so many things, so many first aid purposes. I mean, you need to have duct tape. Um, you probably have a pen and notepad kicking around, throw that in there. Um, you should have a first aid kit. I have my own first aid kit that I made. You can go back a couple episodes and, and listen to that. If you haven't made a first aid kit yet, if you don't have, um, the money to buy a ready-made kit for whatever reason, if you know, you don't have a first aid kit, at least go into your bathroom because it's probably, you probably have this there. Grab at least a couple of band-aids. Maybe you have some gauze and some tape. That would be awesome. Um, maybe you have some vet wrap. <clears throat> if you don't have vet wrap, an ace bandage, something like that. If you don't have that, <coughs> it's not the worst thing in the world. You can use duct tape. Hmm. Excuse me. Um, it was, um, I had a, I'm trying to think. I, um, there's a, there's a book, um, Duct Tape 911, I believe. Um, definitely, it's got all kinds of first aid uses for it. It's really, really cool stuff to have. Yeah, but get some Band-Aids, get some uh, gauze and tape, get some cotton balls, get some tampons if you, um, get some um, menstrual pads, for instance, let's say you get a big gash of a big laceration. If you can get one of those menstrual pads on there, it's going to it's going to help stop that bleeding and absorb the blood and get some uh, duct tape around it. Is it going to hurt taking the duct tape off? Of course it's going to hurt taking the duct tape off. That's not really your concern at the moment, though. Um, the concern there is is to get that pad on there and apply some pressure and make sure it doesn't come off. And the duct tape will certainly get that done. Um, yeah, you do have to replace it, you know, if it's cheap duct tape. So, I mean, it, this is one of those items. It's not necessarily cheap, but if you have it on hand, toss it in there. And, um, yeah, it's, it, that's, that's one of the reasons why you want to have this stuff in there. Um, yeah, um, they, they definitely work well, um, for absorbing the blood in those circumstances. All right. Um, let me see. Where was I on the list here? Here's an item that I hadn't thought of until um, we were. I was I was out shopping for my husband's birthday, and it happens to be New Year's Eve. And um, I was getting birthday candles, and I thought maybe I'm gonna get those trick ones, the one the kind that don't blow out. I'm like, you know, that'd be really good to put in my bug out bag because they won't blow out. You know, I mean, so if I need to, um, if I get a spark going and I can, and I need to, um, I need to keep this lit for just a little bit while I'm, while I'm getting things going. Um, if I can get that candle lit, then it won't blow out. I've got, I've got a little bit more, uh, control there. Um, a travel sewing kit. I mean, you can put this together very simply, get a metal tin, get some needles, some threads, some safety pins, um, you can get these folding scissors. They fold down to like two inches. Um, they're TSA approved cause you can't take a regular pair of scissors anymore on it, on a plane. I found them on Amazon for like three bucks. Yep. So the dollar store Highlander uh, has uh sewing kits too. Yep. So it's, you can find this stuff. Dollar store prepping is your friend. It really is. Um, and then upgrade it as you can. Um, let me see. Pocket knife. I don't know, maybe I'm strange, but I've just got a drawer that's full of these things. That, I don't know. I just sort of picked up. I'm not even sure where I got half of them, but I, I mean, people have given me them. They're like, oh, you like knives. Here you go. And I'm like, okay, that's that's nice. Thanks. So, But they've just kind of got this drawer. I mean, the knives that are in there, they're not necessarily my nice knives, but I got a drawer full of them. So, you know, I put two or three of them in the, in the backpack, uh, you know, spares just in case. Yeah. I am kind of a knife freak. I, I am. I like sharp, shiny stuff. So, um, I mean, I've got much nicer knives in my kit now. Um, 
but if you got nothing else you I mean, probably you got a pocket knife kicking around or you could find one that's not that expensive and toss it in there. Is it great? Is it ideal? No, it's better than nothing. Um, Mylar blankets. I already had these because um, I'd been stocking up on a few things, but let's say you didn't have them. I found them on Amazon, 12, a 12 pack for 11 bucks. That's 92 cents per blanket. Put two or three of them in there and you know, I mean, go crazy. Wow. Put four of them in there. I mean, it's not that expensive. Um, and granted, it would be more expensive, let's say, to spend $11. But it's not all $11 worth of it going in your bag. It's only like a dollar or two. So that's that's the cost you have to look at. Um, black trash bags. Now, if you had, a, if you could get contractors bags, that's even better, but any black trash bag would be helpful. And you probably already have these put a couple of them in there. They, I mean, they're not going to take up that much space, but these are so useful. You can use these for everything from collecting rainwater, make a solar still. You can make a poncho out of them. You can make, a a makeshift solar shower. You, um, collect your water in it and you tie it off, you hang it up and you let it heat up and you just poke a few holes in them and you're going to get from the gravity feed from it, you'll get a solar shower. So again, cleanliness will keep you healthy. Always a good thing. If, if life has been rough, a nice shower certainly will make you feel it. it, it there, there, there is uh, something to be said for that kind of comfort um, as well. Uh, plenty more uses for black trash bags, uh, making shelters, all kinds of things. So you could, you know, two or three of those in there, not taking up any room. Now here's one. People laugh at me, but you know, I, I don't know if it's something just around my area or if it's something that just all the Portuguese mothers around here did, but, um, either plastic grocery bags or the plastic bags that you get from loaves of bread, assuming you eat bread. Um, but you now the plastic grocery bags you can, or these plastic bags that you get from a loaf of bread, you can use these certainly to gather things up. Let's say you're going to be stuck somewhere for a day or two. You didn't anticipate and you might need to forage for what's edible around you, or you're out looking for things you could use for tools or so on. But you can also use these plastic bags to keep your feet dry. That was like a big thing up here in the winter is, you know, you keep your feet dry by sticking them in the, these um, plastic bags that came off the loaf of breads. But, um, you know, it's, um, it, it, you, you didn't, I mean, you bought the loaf of bread, you ate it, the, the plastic bag didn't cost you anything. Um, a garden trowel. Why would you need a garden trowel? Well, I originally wanted a folding emergency shovel, you know, for doing something like digging cat holes. Well, I didn't have any money for it. I mean, not that, I mean, emergency shovels, you know, will cost you anywhere from, I don't know, like anywhere from like 15 bucks all the way up to like 60 bucks. It depends. You know, I mean, there, there, there are all kinds of them now, but I didn't have anything. And so I, I had the garden trowel and I actually had several of them. So I didn't need this one. I already had it. Um, so I put that in the bag. Is it, is it ideal? No, it's not. Would it get the job done? Yeah. So that's what I put in there. Um, a bottle of sunscreen, um, a bottle of spray bug repellent. Already had that at home. Um, I got some, oh, again, from the dollar store, hand sanitizer and baby wipes. If you, if you, um, need to get clean and you don't have running water, those baby wipes and the hand sanitizer will certainly keep you clean enough so that you don't become ill. Other things like super glue, you might have kicking around and it would still work as long as you haven't opened the thing. I can, I can never use it. Once I've opened a bottle of super glue, that's it. Um, but you can use this to fix your shoe. The last thing you want is to be out walking and something happens to the sole of your shoe. That would just be really, really bad. Yep, you could use duct tape for that. Um, but you could also use super glue. You could also use a super glue to close a cut if you if it was bad enough. You could do that. You could use it for that. Um, other things to throw in there is a compass, um, dental floss. I I. I hope most people have dental floss around and not just for dental hygiene, but I mean, you can use that, um, 
if you need to, oh, say, go fishing or something. It, there's all kinds of things you can do with dental floss. Um, and there's all kinds of things that you can add to this. I mean, certainly upgrade it. I mean, look, this isn't the world's best bug out bag. And I make absolutely no claim to that. But it's, this is like, this is a good enough bag. This is a good enough to help you survive, um, so to get to your bug out location. That's what, that's what this bag is. You want better food? Great. You know, get it down the line. You want a better knife? Of course you want a better knife. Who doesn't want a better knife? Um, as soon as you can afford one, get one. You know, you want to add like some base layers to the clothing that's in there? Go for it. You want to add power cord or shoelaces? You know, that's fine. Um... I I think, what have I added? I mean, I've added a Schrade survival knife in there that I really love. Um, I've got several smaller knives in there with me because, you know, why not? Could you add a handgun? Of course you could add a handgun to this. Um, of course, it's going to cost money for that. Um, do you want an ultralight tent? You go for it. We don't have an ultralight tent. We upgraded, um, we added this to our, our uh, bug out stuff. Um, we had, it's a four season tent, but it's like four pounds. It's a snug pack, nine, two, eight, nine, oh, for anyone who's interested, it's an olive green tent. It just kind of disappears in the woods, which I like because whenever you buy a tent, there are all these bright colors. It's like announcing here I am. If you want to keep a low profile that, you know, I mean, this isn't, it's not like a camo. It's not, the, the fabric isn't camo. It's just an olive green. But it doesn't announce that here I am. I'm right here. Look at my bright, like, green and orange tent. Like, my lime green and, you know, fluorescent orange tent. And, and my white and pink tent. Um, I mean, if it's snowing, then maybe the white's fine. But the, all those bright colors, you might not want the attention that draws from other two-legged people. So, um... We found this one. It was an olive green tent. And it was funny because um, my husband was up at um, the Maine Primitive Skills School for a tracking class with Mike Douglas, um, who I need to have come back on as a guest. He was He's he's amazing. I could talk to him for hours and still feel like I, you know, I, I just want to, I want to listen more. But anyway, he brought the tent up there. And one of the other guys in the class said that he walked like almost right up upon the tent before he even realized it was there because it's a very low profile kind of thing. And I like that. So, um, I'm sure that, you know, someone's going to say that this bag really needs to have a weapon, preferably a firearm. And I'm not arguing that of course it should, but you know, start saving your money for that. And when you save up, you know, get a gun for your bag until then, you know, you're short that, oh, well, you know, I mean, it'll come in time. All of these other things will come in time. You want that really cool rocket stove that you can, that, that will recharge your phone. That's great. Save up for it and then you can get it. Um, but at least for now, you know, the, the little $12, you know, volcano stove or whatever will at least get your food cooked. You know, I mean, of course, if, if you, you know, you, if you want, you can always just build a fire um, wherever you happen to camp for that night, assuming that everything is dry. But, um, you know, you can always upgrade. Um, you don't, just don't wait until you can buy everything at once. That moment never really comes. And, the, you know, you may end up finding that this is really a want, not necessarily a need. And you can also buy a lot of this stuff and realize that, holy crap, there's a lot of stuff in my bag and I got to carry it all. You know, so if you can make things smaller, if you can make things lighter, that's great. So when you do upgrade, keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, I hope that these ideas of, you know, I hope that these suggestions and these things that I added to this kit, you know, trigger some ideas, you know, for, for you to, you know, put a bag together that's going to help you get from point A to point B. Um, it may not be the best bag. It may not have all the comforts, um, but it'll get you there. And that's really the point of it all. And then it's certainly better than not having anything. So we are at the end of the show. Don't forget to stop by my website, herbalprepper.com. Sign up for those herbal courses because when things go down the tubes, and I think we can clearly see that things are going down the tubes. I mean, between, um, oh gosh, there's so many things in the news. I'm not even going to get into it. It's too late in the show for that. Um, but once things go bad, 
you know, it's really too late to try and learn a new skill at that time. The time to do that is right now when things are relatively stable. Um, everything that I got, it's entirely online and you can do it at, at your pace, you know, at, in your home, fit it into your schedule. But learn these skills now for, you know, a time where, you know, the pharmacy may not have what you need on hand. So if you like what you've heard, please do connect with me by following me on Facebook, Twitter, G+, Pinterest. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out herbalprepper.com, all the courses there. Thank you, everyone, for spending your time with me. I hope you got something out of this. This has been Kat, the Herbal Prepper with Herbal Prepper Live. We will see you again next week.